Hello, this is Jen, and in this little presentation, I'm going to talk about basically our starting place for discussing open, free, and proprietary software in this class. So what are we talking about here? Well, in this course, which is about open source tools, we're going to evaluate several different popular open source programs. We're also going to get into the philosophy behind these applications, and we're going to wrestle with what it means to be free in the context of computer program design. Heady stuff, right? But to get there, we've got to establish some definitions. So after teasing you about philosophy and exploring cool tools, I hate to disappoint you, but this is going to get really basic for a moment. To understand what open source means, we have to take it apart. Open is one thing, source is another. Open is going to take a while, so for this talk, we're going to focus on what's source. When we talk about open source, usually we are talking about source code. That's the text and numbers and symbols that make up a software program. Let me turn this over to my friends at Wikipedia for a moment. They say, in computing, source code is any collection of code with or without comments written using a human readable programming language, usually as plain text. The source code of a program is specially designed to facilitate the work of computer programmers who specify the actions to be performed by a computer, mostly by writing source code. The source code is often transformed by an assembler or compiler into binary machine code that can be executed by the computer. The machine code might then be stored for execution at a later time. Alternatively, source code may be interpreted and thus immediately executed. All right, everybody got that memorized? Great, here is a part that's a little more relevant to what we're talking about. Most application software is distributed in a form that includes only executable files. If the source code were included, it would be useful to a user, programmer, or a system administrator, any of whom might wish to study or modify the program. Okay, so you can find all that at the Wikipedia page for source code. Wikipedia is itself an example of an open source area. We'll come back to that later too. So did you catch all of that? Maybe not. This class does not require you to be a programmer or even to speak programmer language. So let's try and put this another way. Source code makes a program run, but it's not something most of us are ever going to mess with. Think of it like the engine in a car. I know my car has one, and I know when it's not working. And that's about as far as I'm going to go in fixing it. However, the car analogy breaks down <laughs> right there. If I wanted to fix my car myself, I could go read a manual, okay, or like 800 manuals, and start to figure it out. The engine's right there. I could hammer at it, and things could get fixed. Okay, probably not. Source code doesn't come with every program. Sometimes you buy the car, the program, the app, the operating system, whatever. And instead of seeing the engine, you see a locked black box. The car still runs, but you can't ever see how. And you can't fix it yourself if it breaks, unless you break into the box. And that's often illegal. That's because the code belongs to someone else, and they are very protective of it. And many would say with good reason. If I had the code that could make my computer run, iOS or Windows, or honestly, whatever is behind Animal Crossing, I could copy it down, tweak it a bit, and start selling an even better Animal Crossing. It wouldn't have scorpions. And then Nintendo would flip. And they'd sue me. And they would win. So what's my point in telling you this story? Well, in this course, we'll be using and talking about software that has open source code, meaning anyone can see it and anyone can edit it and use it. 
There are some varying degrees of openness, which is what we'll struggle with next week as we talk about the difference between free software and open source software. Most of the software we use on a day-to-day -day basis is proprietary software. And I've asked you to name and reflect on what you use most in our first reflection assignment this week. So that is a very short overview of what the source part of open is. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about one of these three definitions that's the easiest for us to tackle right now, which is what is proprietary software?